It's Corey from the Reset Girl. And it's week two. Week two. My second video in the pocket art challenge. I'm on a roll. I just want to say thank you so much for all the very, very sweet comments that you ladies left for me in my last video, my debut video. It was so wonderful to see all these little faces and just uh, to read such encouragement and support. It just, it made my, it made my whole month. It really did. So thank you for that. So we are hoping, planning to get these videos up every Saturday. I think we kind of landed on Saturday as a good day for uploading. Hopefully every Saturday morning. It'll kind of be like Saturday morning cartoons, but for grown-up girls. So you can grab your trick cereal or your alphabets and watch me in your jammies, just like old times. <laughs> By the way, I, I would love to know. Tell me in the comments, what was your favorite cereal to eat while you watched your Saturday morning cartoons back in the day? I kind of feel like I was a Lucky Charms girl. I, I really remember those little marshmallow bits. And my mom was not a buy sugary cereal kind of mom. So that was like, that was kind of pushing it, you know, into the sugary cereal. I kind of feel like that was like as far as she wanted to take it. So I'm going to say Lucky Charms for myself. All right. Hey, speaking of Saturday morning, look what I found in my paper stash. I, I am somewhat of a paper hoarder. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember this blast from the past October afternoon? And how cute is this? This was a collection they had uh, called Saturday Morning. And I happened to uh, find it when I was flipping through my paper stash uh, for today's video and realized that that's what it was from. And I also remember that one of the sheets had really cute vintage uh, cereal boxes all over it. I wish I had gotten my mitts on that particular one. I never, never had that, but I don't know. I feel like I can never cut this, this one. It's like the irreplaceable paper. I miss October afternoon so much. What a loss to the paper crafting world to to lose them that they kind of just quietly shut their doors and I I loved them. I loved I loved all their stuff. I just, you know, it's vintage. I just I've always loved vintage. This little cute little boy. Anyway, just I wanted to show you kind of funny coincidence there. So, I want to show you my little setup, the kind of, here's what I did behind the scenes before I jump into any kind of crafting. So um, I did slip my little prompt sheet into this little uh, six by eight full size pocket um, so that I can keep the prompts with all of my pages. So that was one thing was like, well, what do I do with my sheet since I'm gonna be using it all year? So that was one little handy thing. And I do, I can access both sides this way. So I'm going to like keep it in the back of my binder, which I kind of, I think I have settled on a binder. And I did give an existing binder a really cute makeover. And I'm going to do a whole separate video on that to show you how how it's set up and I want to show you I'm going to actually assemble part of it part of like the last embellishing of it on camera so I will do that in a separate video so you'll see this in its new home but I did want to show you in case you wanted to do the same as me the other thing is I kind of I was trying to plan out how am I going to like plan my weeks because you know there's going to be times where I want to kind of assemble or gather materials together in advance so I have these really great uh, plastic envelopes these came from the container store fairly certain you can find uh, very similar if not identical envelopes on Amazon what isn't on Amazon so this is going to be I think how I'm going to do this going forward so I'm sharing it because you might want to do the same thing I, I find that crafting sometimes is like there's different steps to it and part of it is sort of gathering your materials together and I like to kind of have a plan for how I do stuff 
um, especially because I'm making a whole video series. So let me just walk you through what my little process was so that you can kind of um, un understand. Like I don't just have all these magical ingredients. <laughs> it took me time to do this. And that time does need to be factored into the whole uh, pocket process. Here was my, the prompt we were working from. It, this week we are doing color. Again, you can interpret that any way you wish. You could do an entire spread or an entire pocket that's just all different items, but they're all the same color. You could do um, a particular color that kind of stands out over a series of photos. You could use scrapbooking embellishments that are all the same color family or like show a rainbow of color, like literally a whole spread of rainbow images, rainbow usage of materials. So I think color, I think it's pretty, pretty much why I went with such, I would call them more generic prompts because I wanted to let everyone have an opportunity to interpret that any way they wished, whatever their creative little flow took them. I actually... <laughs> I, I started with one thing in my mind, how I was going to do it, and I landed on a completely different square on the game board. So I don't even know what happened, how I, I had one plan and it just sort of metamorphosed into something else. So uh, as you recall, this is last week's page that I did. So it's a four up page. And I have these empty pages, uh, empty pages, empty pockets that I need to fill now um, for this week. So this kind of obviously constricted how I was going to use my pocket page. You don't have to. You could do it any way you wish. You could just use a different pocket. You could just put regular plain old paper in these squares and just move along to, you know, a different format you like. But I want to try to, because I've chosen a binder, I'm kind of concerned about um, space restrictions. So I want to try and compact as much as I can. So I'm just going to fill these. Um, and I kind of went with um, some photos from my Pinterest board. And I, uh, when, whenever it is available, I will link the source of my photo in the description box. Um, so these were from like interior design pictures that they're, they're from. And there's four photos and they have one particular color um, that is very obvious when you kind of lay them out. And it's that mustard yellow. That mustard yellow is like my favorite color. Um, when I was a kid, I had a yellow bedroom, yellow carpet, yellow walls. <laughs> it was the 70s, but I did have a yellow room. Um, I absolutely despise mustard as a condiment, but I love its color. So that's where I'm going is I have these really uh, cute uh, interior photos that I really love that are just like really cute, cozy, cozy little spaces. So I wanted to showcase them in this. And then I, I realized, well, I'm just going to have four photos. I have this small little mini page, a little mini pocket page. There's two spaces here. See how there's a seam right here? So there's two three by three squares. What I was thinking I would do once I get my pockets laid out in this little page, I'm gonna do this little mini pocket over here and kind of add maybe some journaling about this particular spread. And I'm going to add the prompt. So I have a plan for that. So where I'm actually gonna craft and make it a little more, like a little more fussy, a little bit more cute is gonna be this one little square here. So these are just gonna be my workhorse. <laughs> just gonna stick those in there. And then I'm gonna actually do more of the crafting in this one little square. Again, I try to, I would definitely call my style more lazy crafting, but there's times where I'll take a shortcut, like, you know, putting in some, you know, like putting in your photos, you can pull photos off your photo roll. Um, you can find things that you love, magazines, whatever you stick in there, there comes the next stage of the, you know, the crafting part would be embellishing it. So that's, that's how I look at the pocket page experience. It's really a lot of embellishing, but every now and then there's a bit of more like hands on crafting. So that's what I'm going to do, but it's going to be confined to this one little square. So what I really like to do, especially because I'm doing this in a video and I really don't want to be pulling out all my boxes and going through that process while trying to film, I wanted to kind of choose things ahead of time. So in general, I would expect that a lot of times I'm just going to have everything in a little envelope and all kind of gathered together. But just know it did probably take me about 30 minutes, maybe, maybe 45 minutes. So um, 
but but in my defense, uh, I know I'm making videos to show people, and I'm so in my mind, I'm not just doing stuff to please me. I'm also trying to do some things that are kind of like, look, look at this cool thing you can do, so that you know you have a little crafty trick under your belt. Because I'm I'm just really not a a big crafter. I don't. I'm really a one trick pony. So I got very few tricks to show you. <laughs> so you know what what I think what I think is fun or cool is generally going to be on a low level crafting side. It's not going to be groundbreaking at all. But I I don't know. I just I I think it's kind of cool. So that's how I thought I would spend my time in my videos. Okay, so now that I've shown you my little setup and giving you a little uh, a little taste of what is to come, let's let's get into the crafting. So I'm, this is going to take me like roughly ten seconds, twenty seconds. I just need to kind of get in. Uh, I like to balance photos, paper, so that the you know either images or whatever you're choosing there's balance so these are the, the two darker of them I kind of feel like if you if you go that way it it makes this seem too dark where this is very light and bright so generally I try to mix things up a little so there's your eyes I don't know it feels a little bit more balanced so this is going to take me two seconds so in general I just kind of want to stick these in here now um, I mentioned in my last video that Sometimes doing crafting like this um, is really a multi-stage process. And sometimes you may not be feeling it and you're just satisfied that you got things into a pocket and call it good. And I'm I, I'm glad that you got something in a pocket. Um, but other times you might feel a little more excited about, you know, embellishing or whatnot. Or you learned something new along the way and then you want to go back and add that to some of your earlier pockets. So these are really plain Jane in terms of like, they're just, they're just pictures. There's nothing special um, other than the work that the actual photographer and stylist did together. Um, so I will probably come back and do something, if not in this video later. I'm just going to set those aside for a minute because what I want to focus on, let's move this out of the way. What I want to focus on is this, this, these little pockets. So I pre-selected some paper and I did go through my whole little paper collection. I showed that to you guys in my last video about, you know, how I have pre-cut paper and there's a reason why. So this is that reason so that it makes it really easy to do this part. So I think how I was kind of playing around with this. I think this guy up here is going to be the kind of title page or title square, if you will. And this one I might, I think it looks really neat with this, this little color story I got going here. I think this is a really cool one for doing journaling. And I think um, doing some kind of journaling, I will follow the, you know, the angle of the color so that it kind of mirrors that little sun, like radiant sunburst kind of look. Now this guy, this guy, um, I was inspired by the little shapes on this particular paper. This little hexagon. I love a hexagon. That's been a part of my brand for a very long time. I love the shape of it. It's just magical. And I recalled that we have a a sticker sheet that includes the little hexes that has been a long-standing uh, sticker type on our sticker sheets that we've offered in our store for a while for I don't know pretty roughly ever since we got started I would say they were introduced very early on so I wanted to show you this this is a previous little work of art that I had done. This is this girl's from like a magazine and I cut her out like a 1961-62 type magazine. Cut her out and then turned her into an embellishment. This paper is uh, a crepe paper design. And see these little diamonds? I happen to have a little diamond punch that makes these adorable baby diamonds and they fit perfectly in this paper. So when I had done this, that was like, ooh, I love this. Any chance I get to do this again, I'm all in. So that is where we are today 
with this one, I realized I have little hexes. Let me go test it out. They are not a perfect fit for this. They actually are smaller, but they're not, it's, it's not terrible. Like there is definitely potential. Um, I kind of like designs where they're sort of random randomly placed or kind of like they're more asymmetrical they're not perfect and I want to use this again to put my prompt on so what I'm basically going to do is add um I think I want to spell out the word color with these alpha letters because they're in yellow and I think that's amazing so I got some to work with here so I'm going to peel off some of my faves I am gonna kind of build a kind of a pattern at first, but I really do like like doing this little honeycomb and then have like a few offset ones. We'll see. The tweezers are magical. This makes this process really easy. If you're interested in uh, some of the tools I'm using, we, we thoroughly went through all of the different links for products that I use in my videos, the, the pocket pages, the, even the tweezers, wherever it's possible to share a product um, link that would be helpful for you. Um, we You can find those in the description box below. So I have a couple sheets to work with. I see this gorgeous number six over here. That's a number, I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide how I'm gonna do this. I think the, the, I should probably just lay them out, but I actually wanted to lay the, um, the stickers on top of at least one of the, the stickers. So almost as if they were here first. <laughs> um, let me see here. I love these stickers so much. These are from our Journaling Essentials collection. It is, I would call them my my bread and butter stickers. Like there's just no, there's no craft I'm not doing that, that I can't use these. They're like, they're amazing. They're so multi multifunctional. I've used them for so many different types of things I've done, which is why I, I really strongly feel like paper is just really all I need. And then some stickers. Okay, I am positive that there is a very professional way of doing this. If I was a real, <laughs> if I was like a real crafter, it would be amazing. I genuinely, I don't, I'll be honest, I really don't watch crafting videos. I really don't know <laughs> all the little tricks. So there's that. So I'm sure a lot of you uh, maybe watching this right now and, and saying to yourself, my gosh, don't you know how to put on alphas? And I would say, I don't, I don't. I've never, I've never watched anyone do it. Somebody once told me to use a ruler, you know, a straight edge of some kind to sort of do what I'm doing right now is like, make sure you're getting the letters kind of spaced out correctly. And I, I don't know, I'm thinking this pocket will do. So if this is just really painful to watch because you know that there's a better way to do it and you, you wish you could just reach through the computer right now and shake me. Maybe it's a good time to get a drink. I just really don't want to put you through pain of watching me. This is why I say like, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not really a crafter. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, that's amazing. Now, I wonder if it's going to look amazing being on the page. Do I think so? I think so. I think that looks incredible. Now, the question is, now that I've done this, how do I... Okay, let me see. I'm, I'm experimenting now. <laughs> It's really trying to decide. Okay, so that was a that was kind of a fail. It, it's not an epic fail because I got two of them down, but this isn't my best moment either. I kind of feel like this R was about right there. We'll just kind of lightly, lightly lay them down, and that way they're a little movable. So I promised you a challenge, you know, to get you crafting weekly 
little pocket works of art as I am doing now. I did not promise you that I would I would be a good a good person to emulate. Okay. Does that work? I think it works. It works for me. I think it's I I wish it had like a, it had something to make it help pop a little bit like it's kind of blending in. So maybe that's sort of my problem right now. I just need it to sit. I don't know, but if I put some other type of paper on there, let me try. Let me look at this really quick. I don't know if it's maybe like a really, like a cream colored paper. You know, if it was just like, for instance, here's like a old book page, which has that lovely creamy vintagey paper. What I'm trying to say is if it was like sitting on a rectangle and the rectangle was on my card, would that be a better solution? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to test my theory. I'm going to cut some of this paper which is crumbly because it's so old and vintage, which is delicious. This paper doesn't really rip. It actually kind of crumbles apart. I think that's about how how much I need. So, essentially my paper is just going to be like sitting on top of this rectangle. And you know what? I don't hate it. I feel like it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a word strip. Now, um, if I take it all the way to the edge though, it's gonna look much better, you know, it'll look more on purpose. So let's, let's transfer my little, my little alphas. Cause it, it was okay. It, it's okay they were there. I just didn't feel like it was, they were all they could be. So we're giving them another shot. And I'm not even going to try to make sure that they're all super straight because I think that would make me crazy. When you're a lazy crafter, there's just certain things that you have to accept. When you're on the lazy side, you're going to have to accept that you won't have straight edges all the time. Things won't always match up. And it's okay. Yeah, I think that looks much better. Now to make it look more cool and authentic and it's more like carefree and I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the little mini attacher, which is so precious and wonderful. It's, it's slightly crooked which I love. And also the other thing that I try to, I try to do because it somehow it just makes it look a little more intentional or authentic. I don't know what the right word is. I'm going to put one up here. See how it's kind of hanging off the page. So then I'm going to cut it. So it's like, I don't know. I just really love that. It just always makes it look more I don't know, random and up, but yet on purpose. Also, what would happen if I added a little bit of my vintage tape? <laughs> yes, make sure I get it. If I'd been on my game, I would have put it down first and then stapled it, but that's fine. Oh yes, that looks cool. Okay, so that's really gonna be my little statement piece. That's generally the, the major crafting that I have here. So, oops, my little sticker. I wasn't watching it and I slipped it in too fast and it got away from me. Let's see. Put that back in its place. Now with hexagons, you do have to get them in there pretty straight because they're so geometric. Okay, so that looks really good. I love that. So on this one, like I said, um, this is the prompt. I'm probably gonna do, I won't do it on camera, but I'll, I will try to do it before I film my next one. But I will. I wanna talk about this, this uh, color being yellow, that that's like this very, magical color for me 
um, and I'll probably do it on this page on the, you know, in terms of like journaling it and writing at that angle, I think will be kind of cool. So I will do that separately. So there's going to be, this will be my spread. Now, 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 now that I've done this, I do want to add some little extra touches. So I love, 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 love. I love the little glitter stars, so I want to get those involved. And my favorite glue stick. Get that. Unscrew this. And I am going to add some to, I want to add them to all of them because it just looks so, so cool. So let me start with this one. This one has the darkest background. So I feel like um, something will show up better on this one. Just tap the, just tap the tip of the um, tweezers in the glue and they will suddenly become uh, really good for picking up little tiny embellishments such as this. So I'm going to put a star as if it's holding that up on purpose. I think I'm just going to do my little cluster of three. That looks fun. And Okay, so I slid that back in and now it's got those little glitter stars under the page. These pockets are actually, they're double-sided and I forget, I've never worked with pockets like this. These are those A5 size that I talked about in my last video. So I've never had double-sided pages. These, there's actually like a, I don't know if you can see it. There's actually a separate pocket. Like the picture isn't sharing space with the picture here. And there's a divider in between them. I've never seen that before. I found that very interesting. So with this, I was thinking I would add, again, using my little fun stickers to sort of embellish. Um, and then I really like making a pen, wrong pen. I like doing these little things I call doodads, like little plus marks, stars. Looks like I have like stitched the kind of bottom of the little rug with the word cozy. So um, just, you know, just like adding a little extra touch. I'm trying to decide what would make this picture feel a little more, a little more awkward or cool. I think it'll shine, the, the stars underneath will shine through. I believe maybe they won't, they do. So some random washy, Kind of makes it look a little more crafted. See, this is the part where I'm saying it's like a little bit like, it's like semi-crafting. It's like hybrid homemade. So we're going to pop this one in here. So this one has a strip going at the top of it that I feel like would make an excellent place for vintage tape. Maybe some washi. I don't want to do anything that's going to like call 
too much attention away from the awesomeness of this little vignette. But at the same time, I don't want to miss an opportunity to use that white space. And I have this one washi that I feel like would be pretty awesome. Trick is deciding like, where does the washi look its best? I guess right across the top. No fooling around. I was gonna kind of do it offset, but no. It ended up going right across the top. That looks kind of fun. I also feel that this is a, a, an occasion for some glitter. So I have these little thickers. There's these fun little brackets here. I don't know that I've ever used a glitter bracket. Today's the day. So that's kind of fun, highlighting the, the display. They're definitely thicker right there. See how thick they are? Look, look right here. And then I think something says you should just let it be. And then there's another part of me that says, don't you dare get more stickers on there. So I'm gonna take some of my little hexy stickers and build like a little trio of them. I wish I had a mustard yellow. This might be enough. No, this is where I like putting things randomly. I'm not sure if it's too late. Sometimes the stickers, when they attach themselves like to a, uh, you know, the matte paper that's already, you know, that's been printed, sometimes they have stuck and they will not let go and they'll rip part of your paper, but not this time. Okay, I see a little place where I could stick this cute girl here. Okay, so that leaves this one here that hasn't been embellished in any way. So this, this right here. I love this so much. This one needs, she's reading. Okay, so I'm pulling this one out because I'm gonna do some sticker work. I would do anything to be able to purchase these again. These came from Freckled Fawn years ago. They are so cute. I was kind of torn about using these because they are very delicate and you know, they're older so like the stick isn't perfect anymore. So I might have to kind of give them a little swipe of glue. I have no clue how to gauge how much space I'm gonna need for this one. So just gonna lay them down. And because they're like really wonky alphas anyway, it'll be fine. They're not, they're not necessarily ones that you, you know, need to keep in a straight line. They can be, they're very playful. They're a mix of upper and lower case. So they're very much intended to be fun, which is great because now I don't have to work so hard. Let's see here. Those of you who are familiar with Bible time might know where this is headed. I think I need to spread these letters out more. Let me see, where is that? I don't know if this is actually an E. I don't know what else it could be though, but it's a weird E. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it here. So because the, the cover is yellow. I'm gonna need to use the white. Okay, this definitely needs to scooch over. I have a feeling that this needs more room. The A is really cute, capital letter A. Okay, now this might be where I have, I'm full of regrets <laughs> of how I've laid this out because I have clearly run out of room. Keep read. So there we go. I did have to scooch it all over and I don't know if you can even see it, but this alpha has got the tiniest dot. Do you see that little dot right there? That's the dot for the eye. I cannot begin to tell you how difficult 
that little dot was to manipulate, to, to move it, to grab it. I don't even know how I'm gonna get this into the pocket without losing it. Apparently, my dear husband was watching me film, just making sure that I'm staying on camera, that everything's going well. And he said, from the minute you put that R down, I knew it wasn't going to go well. We, we seem to be having success. That little dot has not moved. I did glue it down to within an inch of its little life. Okay. Oh, I feel so accomplished. So for my week two, this is what I'm looking at. I have color and I kind of interpreted this prompt as like really colorful spaces. These are some of my very favorite pictures I have on my Pinterest board and they just are like I would cr I would curl up in any of these little spots. I absolutely love the blue pattern that's kind of um, contrasting with this mustard yellow and the pink. The color palette is some of my favorite colors. This is there's a lot of TRG colors here. And I don't know, I just love it. I love the moodiness of this kind of wall. Also the moodiness going on here with the blue shag. Like there's very much this kind of echo going back. There's just a lot of my favorite colors here. And I just remember the first time I saw each of these pictures, I was like, oh, inside. And so now they're kind of um, captured. And again, I will put down in the description box credits for where they came from. And then I have my cute little kind of... Um, the, the little mini page here that is reminding me what the prompt was for this particular week. I will, I'm going to journal about it because I want to talk a little bit to myself about that mustard yellow and the role it played in my life because it is always, it has always been a favorite. Um, so that's it for this week. And like I said, I'm going to make a separate video to talk about my binder that I'm going to be putting these in. And then once I've done that, you'll see the binder. You'll see these go into the binder. I just didn't want to ruin the surprise. And uh, I'll see you in the next video with week number three. I hope that you are enjoying the pocket challenge. I hope you are having fun making these little mini works of art. Again, let me remind you, you do not have to do a full page for a prompt if you are short on time or imagination. You can just do one single little pocket for the prompt. So each of these could represent a, a prompt and this could be four weeks. And again, I did show in my last video how you could make invisible pockets. So you don't even have to use pocket pages. I know one of the things about pocket pages people struggle with is the glare. You know, when you try and take a picture of your work and it's just really difficult because it's so shiny and plasticky. Um, but I'm going to work around that. I am just, I love this spread. That's what I'm up to. I'll probably do a little bit of stamping, like the date. I'll, I'll use my roller stamp, but I will show you this completed square in the next video. And I hope that you have a wonderful week until I see your little faces again. Bye everybody. Music